Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming to our webinar on returning to exercise after pregnancy. Our objectives for this presentation are to understand the location and function of your pelvic floor and core muscles, uh, learn what happens to your body during pregnancy and delivery, and then knowing how to return um, safely return to exercise after pregnancy. So a quick rundown on my professional background. Um, from Delta, I got my Associates of Applied Science and Health Fitness Specialist degree. I'm also a certified personal trainer, um, Bachelor's of Science from Kinesiology from CMU, where I also got my doctorate in physical therapy. Um, I've done a lot of postgrad education um, in pelvic health rehab. I'm a pregnancy and postpartum corrective exercise specialist, and I did a year-long program through the University of Michigan School of Social Work for Sexuality Counseling and Educating. My personal background, I live in Midland with my family. You can see pictured there, the two older ones are my stepkids, and then the baby I made myself. Um, I am a runner, and we love to hike, and that is my dog, Theo, who's crazy. So as a disclaimer, this presentation um, on exercising during and after pregnancy is for informational and educational purposes. It's not a substitute of instruction from your um, OB provider or healthcare provider in general. Always consult someone before beginning any new exercises. So looking at our female bodied anatomy, on this left side, we can see uh, looking in from the side if your body was cut in half here, we have your pubic bone and abdomen, abdomen here. We have your sacrum and your tailbone here. And then we have your bladder, uterus and vaginal canal, and then your rectum. And then this kind of like orange pink color down here, those are all your pelvic floor muscles. And then this picture on the right is looking up from the bottom. We have your tailbone here, pubic bone here, then we have the clitoris and urethra, the vaginal opening and the rectal opening. All of this red right here, those are all your pelvic floor muscles. And then we have your bigger gluteal muscles here. So everything is really closely related. Functions of your pelvic floor. So think about the five S's. We have support of our pelvic organs. We have sphincter control, so closing off the urethral and rectal openings so we don't pee and poop and we don't want to pee and poop. Uh, also being able to relax to let everything out. Stabilization of our pelvis, of our sacrum, of our lumbar area. A sexual function, so ability to have an orgasm and pleasure with sex. And then some pump, meaning um, we get a pistoning motion from our diaphragm and our pelvic floor kind of working together. And that helps with fluid flow, that helps with um, natural lengthening and strengthening of the pelvic floor. And then what actually makes up your core are four different muscles. It's not just your abdomen. So your pelvic floor, this is, we just went over that one. Um, I'll go briefly over this. It connects from your pubic bone to your tailbone, and then it has those five S's. Your transversus abdominis is your deepest muscle of your abdominal core. So your deepest core muscle of those abdominal muscles. They work to directly support your pelvic floor and it co-contracts with it. And these muscles have to work um, synergistically before movement to lengthen and stabilize the spine, pelvis, and pelvic organs. So this muscle that you see over here, that is your transversus abdominis. It wraps from the bottom of your ribs all the way down to your pubic bone on your hip bones, and then it inserts on the back side of your ribs. The other two muscles that make up your core are your diaphragm and your multifidus. So your diaphragm is our breathing muscle that sits underneath our lungs and um, in between our rib cage. Like I said, the diaphragm will lower and flatten when you breathe in, and then when you breathe out, it elevates. And then the multifidus is this uh, collection of muscle here that goes along your entire spine. So this is the back side of your core. And then your core at work. So this is a good image of how the pelvic floor and the diaphragm have to work together to do that pistoning motion. So the core muscles also have to work together for pressure control. And what it does is a canister balance um, 
if you think of the entire core as like a pop can, the top is your diaphragm, the bottom is your pelvic floor, the front and most of the sides is your transversus abdominis, and then we have the multifidus in the back. So when all of those muscles are working correctly, it's like the pop can is closed. The integrity of it is strong and stable. You can't really move around a lot. Now, if one of those muscles were to not function properly, one of our four core muscles not function properly, it's like the pop can's opening. So it's not doing as good with that pressure management. From there, we can get prolapse, we can get back pain, pelvic pain, we can get leakage, whether that's urinary or fecal. Um, so that's important to retrain after pregnancy because as we will learn, a lot of those muscles get stretched out um, or just start to function suboptimally during and after pregnancy. So rehab of that is very important. So physical changes during pregnancy, you get stretch induced weakness um, of the abdominals and the pelvic floor. You get increased pressure down to the pelvic organs. Your head kind of comes forward. Your shoulders will round. Your low back will arch to maintain that center of balance um, and to counteract the center of mass change. So with that, those muscles aren't going to function properly. Um, the integrity of that canister will change. And then as well, as baby grows, the diaphragm is going to get pushed up because you're, so you're not getting as much movement in that natural pistoning mechanism. So looking at what happens during birth, um, we'll go over vaginal and C-section. We'll know why it is important to slowly return to exercise and to also rehab. So as you may know, um, dilation goes from the size of a Cheerio to the size of a melon. So there's a lot of changes there. As we're looking at this right side, we see how um, baby is going to rotate and come out and how much those vaginal muscles in the vaginal canal are really, really getting stretched out. So that's why you get that stretch induced weakness. That's why you can feel sometimes feel like things are falling out afterwards. Um, those vaginal muscles in the vaginal canal might not ever feel the same afterwards because they get so stretched out that they sometimes can't go back to the size that they were before. And that's also will depend on, <clears throat> excuse me, the size of your anatomy, but also the size of your baby and how your delivery went in general. So if you have had, if you had a very, very fast labor, if there were like forceps or vacuum or tearing, that will also change the function of the muscles and how quick you are able to return to exercise or how much rehab you may need. So with a C-section um, procedure, there's a couple different incisions that they may do um, to the abdomen and also to the uterus. You can see those pictured there. The um, So this order, this is the order in here of how things are um, put into. And then you're sewn up layer by layer at the end. And just keep in mind that this is major, major abdominal surgery. You're cutting through seven different layers. It's maybe the only surgery where you cut through that many layers because you have a couple of extra organs to cut through. Um, and recovery will take longer than vaginal delivery most times, depending on how a vaginal delivery may occur because you are cutting through so many layers. Common impairments we see postpartum. So you can have urinary or bowel incontinence, urinary frequency and or urgency. Um, that would be going to the bathroom more often than every three to four hours or more often than eight times in a 24 hour period. Diastasis recti, where is that separation of the abdominal muscles, which there is a slide coming up to go over that a little bit more. I hate this phrase, but mommy belly, um, that's what a lot of people know that as. Pelvic pressure or discomfort. Uh, pain with intercourse, low back, hip, or pubic bone pain, and then scar discomfort, which could be from the C-section or from um, vaginal tearing or episiotomies. So as I briefly mentioned before, you have an increased risk of pelvic floor dysfunction with prolonged pushing, labor under 20 minutes, use of forceps or vacuum, um, and we get a prolonged stretch on the pelvic floor can cause weakness with or without vaginal delivery. So just because you've had a C-section does not mean that your pelvic floor um, is in tip-top shape because of pregnancy that does put a lot of extra pressure down to the pelvic floor. And with a C-section, since you are cutting in through so many layers and there's going to be scar tissue buildup, that will change the quality of the abdominal muscles and how well it's able to contract. 
So with that diastasis or diastasis, tomato, tomato, that is when we get a separation of your rectus abdominis muscle and overstretching of the linea alba. So this is our rectus abdominal muscle. It's our six pack muscle. And what happens with the diastasis is it can widen along that midline. And then the linea alba is a connective tissue that helps keep that together. And that gets overstretched. This is normal for most pregnant um, people. And it does continue postpartum on occasion. Sometimes it'll come back together on its own. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, so you want to avoid exercises or motions that increase doming along that separation. So if you see like peak, if you see a dome, if you see almost like a bread loaf, um, when you're doing exercises, you definitely want to scale that back and kind of reassess and try to activate some of those deeper core muscles. Um, if you have it, when you're going from lying down to sitting up, try a log roll. So that is where you, if you're going from standing, you would sit down, come onto your elbow and then lay down. When you're um, sitting up, you would turn onto your side, push up from the side and then come up instead of going from your back into a sit up. So with the diastasis, this can increase pressure onto your pelvic floor, pelvis and low back, which can cause low back pain. It can cause, um, Pelvic organ prolapse can cause pelvic pain. It can cause leakage. So precautions during returning to exercise. So if you notice any of the following during exercise, scale back on what you're doing. Urinary or fecal leakage, pelvic pain, low back pain, abdominal pain, incision discomfort. Um, depending on how soon you are doing certain things, you would want to stop if bleeding or opening of that incision occurs and definitely seek medical care if that happens. Like I said, any doming or peaking of the abdomen, increase in pelvic pressure or feelings of falling out, and always make sure that you're breathing when you're exercising and you're exhaling on the effort, because when you exhale again, you get that little lift of the pelvic floor, um, as long as you're doing it correctly, so you should get uh, better activation. So myths of returning to exercise postpartum. Um, Biggest one I would say is you can't do anything within that first six to eight weeks. That is false. So there are definitely things that you can do within that first six to eight weeks. And if you think about how often you're lifting your baby, you're lifting a car seat, um, that is exercise in itself. So you absolutely can do some activity in that six to eight week range. And then myth number two is once you're cleared for the six to eight weeks, you're good to return to whatever activities you like. Um, you have to keep in mind that you grew and carried a baby or babies for nine, 10 months. Um, you went through major abdominal surgery or a delivery of a melon sized thing out of your body. Um, you could be breastfeeding, you could be pumping, that will take more out of your body. You're probably not sleeping well, that will take more out of your body. Um, and delivering the placenta in general is a dinner size plate injury in the size inside of your abdomen. So your body went through a lot and just recovering from pregnancy in general, your hormones, your vitamins, your minerals, everything is all over the place and trying to regulate. So definitely keep in mind that I don't recommend going from yep, you're good to return at six to eight weeks and then you go outside and run three miles. I don't think that's great. Um, a great choice because you want to make sure everything is working properly. Um, if you return too early, that can cause injuries, that can cause prolapse, that can cause leakage. We don't want those things to happen. But how soon and to what level you're able to return to exercise will depend on many factors. So it will depend on how active you were prior to pregnancy, how active were you um, how active were you during pregnancy? How did your delivery go? Were you on bed rest? Um, did you have a C-section? Did you have a vaginal delivery? How long were you in labor? Are you breastfeeding? Are you pumping? There's a lot of things that go into that, um, which we will talk about. So if we will we'll break up the return to exercise into three different phases. So phase one is your rehab and recovery phase of zero to six to eight weeks, because six weeks we're talking vaginal delivery, eight weeks we're talking a C-section. And then from phase two, weeks seven to nine-ish, to then 18 to 20-ish, we're talking about returning to exercise. So some of those things you were may have been doing um, prior or during pregnancy. 
And then that last phase is bulletproofing your body. So we're really, really working on a lot of strength training and that higher endurance stuff. And that's from like 19 to 21 ish weeks to then 42. So it does take a long time to heal after pregnancy. It's not that six to eight week range and you're good to go. Um, I usually actually recommend that people don't try to have another baby until about 18 months postpartum because your body needs time to heal. So it does take a long time. So looking at phase one goals, we are wanting to improve pelvic floor muscle activation, but that's also contracting and relaxing. So when we think of a contraction, that is our Kegel. You always want to make sure you are relaxing afterwards because just like any other muscle in the body, our pelvic floor needs to be able to contract, relax, and lengthen. You can overdo Kegels. Um, and as a side note here, if you do have pelvic pain or pain with intercourse, Kegels might not be the right choice for you. Um, but just make sure that you are relaxing afterwards. Another th important thing to look at as a side note is doing body scans throughout the day, making sure you're not clenching your muscles. So even like um, crunching up your eyebrows, clenching your jaw, shoulders and your ears, those are all things that can um, affect how your pelvic floor is functioning as well. Making sure you're not squeezing your abdominal muscles at rest, tightening the pelvic floor at rest, squeezing your butt muscles at rest, at rest, your muscles should be at rest um, and not activating. So body scans are good to do. We want to focus on relieving any aches and pains in the spine, the so lumbar, thoracic, um, sacrum, pelvis, working on improving breathing patterns, getting that diaphragm to get that good excursion since we weren't able to when baby was inside of our belly, um, working on a gentle walking routine that's good for general strengthening and endurance and getting some cardiovascular work in, working on alignment, um, meaning posture, especially post-C-section, um, because sometimes we we don't really want to stand up straight or stretch because it may bother our incision. So making sure we're getting our posture um, back in line and then getting as much rest as possible. So what um, an exercise program may look like in phase one. We're going to break that up into that first two weeks postpartum. So doing core breathing, um, example is 10 reps, two times a day, which we will go over. I'll show you how to do that. Short bouts of light walking and a lot of rest. Again, you are healing from being pregnant, from delivery. You could be nursing. That takes a lot out of you. Again, not probably sleeping the greatest. So making sure you're resting to recover your body. And then that three week to then six to eight week range postpartum, you're again working on the core breath, short bouts of light walking, a lot of rest. And then you can start some gentle body weight exercises and stretches. So an example would be an open book. So if you lay on your side, your knees are bent, arms are straight out in front, and you're opening that arm up. So you would do... Um, we could do 10, 15 on one side, you turn over and do the other side. So that will work posture, that'll work um, getting that center of mass changes back and then like holding baby, nursing baby, you're always kind of crunched forward. So that helps open you back up. Same thing with that doorway pec stretch. So this is our doorway, our arms will come here and you'll kind of step forward to get a stretch in your chest an upper trap stretch. So um, the side that you're stretching, that arm will be down. You can use your hand to kind of gently pull your neck to the opposite shoulder. You should feel a stretch right in here. Again, that's helping posture wise, mini squats. So for these, I'd recommend like putting your hands on a table or counter. You're coming down, I would say 90 degrees, let's say about 45. And then you're coming back up, making sure you're exhaling on the way up. And you can also do wall push-ups. Um, Obviously, the more horizontal you are, the more difficult it's going to be. So the higher you up, the easier it'll be. Phase two goals. We are continuing to work on pelvic floor muscle activation and function, breathing patterns. We want to increase baseline strength of the entire body, especially our core. We're going to start working more on aerobic fitness. You will monitor and mobilize that C-section scar tissue to ensure healing, but also allow for adequate abdominal muscle activation. So what that will look like, that first seven to nine weeks to 12 to 14 weeks postpartum, continue to work on the core breath. We are working on a full body strengthening routine. So that can be done um, two to three sets of the workout 
eight to 10 reps, and that's two to three times a week. So you could do body weight squats, you can do incline push-ups. So you could be coming down to maybe a chair instead of the wall, body weight lunges. You can do banded pull-aparts where you're pulling the band um, apart to get that upper back, upper body. You can walk up to 45 minutes a day as energy and schedule permit because we know that life with a newborn is ever-changing and difficult, but it's a great time to get you a baby out of the house. Um, when I was postpartum, my baby was in the NICU for 28 days. And when she came home, I was like, I'm never putting her down and I'm just never going to leave the house. And my husband said, we're either going to Home Depot or we're going outside to walk. You need to pick one. And I said, well, let's go to Home Depot so I can buy plants. So it's very good to have someone supporting you to help you if you're having trouble um, getting out of the house, which especially if you have those postpartum mental health issues, which I did. Um, it's great to have that support system because activity, you know, exercise is medicine. So activity is really important also for your mental health, just as a side note. And then for the next um, part of phase two, we're at that 12 to 14 week range to the 18 to 20 weeks. Again, we're continuing with the core breath, trying to get that canister in balance. Um, you'll do two to three full body strength workouts a week, still at that two to three set range at eight to 12 reps. So we're bumping, or that should be 10 to 12 reps, um, 10 to 12 reps. So we're bumping up the intensity just a little bit. So you could do goblet squats where you use a kettlebell or dumbbells. You could do a dumbbell bench press. Um, you could do step ups onto a box or steps or a chair and a supported one arm row. So you're on a bench and you're bringing that um, dumbbell or kettlebell back. Now we're going to try and walk 60 minutes a day as energy and schedule permit. And you may add one vigorous intensity cardio session of 10 to 20 minutes. If you're going to run though, we would want to make sure you can pass that return to running screening, which we will go over. Um, I always recommend, and we'll talk about this more with the running screening, you have to be able to walk with no leakage or pelvic pain before you're able to run. Phase three goals, continuing to work on our pelvic floor and our breathing. Um, you may possibly, but slowly increase your aerobic exercise. You will continue with progressing strength training, and then you can begin prepping for more strenuous activity-based goals. So longer runs, heavier lifting, plyometrics. And that's again, based off of how active were you prior to pregnancy, how active were you during pregnancy, and what are your goals? So if you are just like, I want to be able to run a 5k, we're going to be probably not working on as intensive exercises as someone who is wanting to um, do like CrossFit. And there's a lot of like power lifting and jumping. So it just depends on your goal or your goal could be like, I want to jump on the trampoline without peeing my pants. We'd obviously work more on the jumping activity. So it just depends on what your goals are. So we're looking at that 19 to 20 week to 42 weeks postpartum, always working on our core breathing, strength training, two to four weekly, two to times um, weekly based on energy levels, goals, and schedule. So this is where you can add in a barbell squat. You can add in horizontal, like full horizontal push-ups on your feet or your knees. We can do weighted deadlifts, weighted lunges, barbell hip thrusts, and overhead presses. So just making those things a little bit more intense. At this point, you can perform high intensity interval training. You can add in plyometrics. Um, with lifting, you want to do lower reps, lower rep ranges, and then progress it up. So if we're working on like more of that strength training and you are increasing the weight, you're going to want to go down to lower reps and then moderate intense cardio one to time, one to two times weekly. So this is an example of a return to running screen single leg heel raises, standing hip extension and abduction, which is just like leg out to the side and like backwards, double and single legs hops, jogging in place, mini single leg squats, single leg bridges. Um, the quality and quantity of this is important. So it's a really good idea to see a pelvic floor therapist so that we can monitor that. Um, if you're able to complete 30 minutes of walking and pass a screen with no symptoms, you should be safe to begin a one rock, run walk program. So if you are going to return to running, I highly recommend 
starting with a run walk. You could do, um, you could base that off minutes. You could base that off distance. So if you want to do like a 30 second run to a one minute walk, a one minute walk to a one minute run, something like that. So you are not going like pedal to the metal. You need to be able to monitor your symptoms and make sure things are not worsening as you're going along. So let's look at this core breathing. So first I'll go through the pictures and then I'll show you a video that may be helpful. So I like to think of it as umbrella breathing. So when you are breathing in, the umbrella is opening. You should feel your rib cage expand out to the side. You shouldn't see a lot of chest movement. You can also think of as you're inhaling through the nose, your rib cage is expanding like an umbrella or an accordion. And then as you're breathing out, um, this is just with the core breathing. This isn't normal breathing. It is like um, a corset is being tightened. Another way to look at it is like a jellyfish is swimming. So when you breathe in, the jellyfish is opening. When you breathe out, the jellyfish is closing. Obviously, this is way faster than what you would be doing. Um, but just imagine as you're breathing in, the jellyfish is opening, your pelvic floor is relaxing. As you are breathing out, the jellyfish is closing, pelvic floor is lifting, and the core is tightening. And we started from the beginning. Hold, please. Okay. So what can pelvic floor physical therapy do? We will assess your entire system. We'll evaluate strength, function, coordination of the abdomen and pelvic floor. We will look at um, posture. We will look at breathing. We will look at scar tissue. Um, where it will, can address pain and discomfort during pregnancy, after pregnancy, labor and birth prep. We can teach... Um, this is for pregnancy, perineal massage. We'll check your pelvic floor strength, um, coordination for postpartum recovery. Again, we're looking at the scar tissue management. We're going to look at your hip strength, your low back strength, your like, how is your sacrum moving? How is everything coming back um, after your hips have widened during pregnancy? So we can make sure that you are returning safely and that you will hopefully not have any injuries as you're returning to the higher level of things. And then these are our locations um, for pelvic floor therapists. I am in Midland, and then we have a good handful of other areas. Um, upcoming webinars on October 8th, we are doing the fourth trimester caring for your body post-delivery. So that first 12 weeks, November 12th, we'll be going over more of that diastasis and how you can treat that and check for it at home. And then um, December 10th, we'll, we'll talk more about prolapse. And question time. Thank you, Dr. Katie. I'm like three years postpartum and I still learn something from you every time we do these. So thank you so much. Um, we did just have one question that was submitted during the registration. Anybody who's here with us live, you still have time to submit a question if you'd like to. Um, but somebody said they had a C-section 14 months ago and they still have a ton of lower back pain. You know what might help or what might be causing that? Yeah. So, um, like I talked about with the C-section scar, it will change the way your abdominal muscles are functioning and firing. So if you have, um, a lot of scar tissue buildup and adhesions, that abdominal muscle is not going to be able to contract correctly. So we might need to work on abdominal strengthening and stability. Um, it could, you could have a diastasis, so an abdominal separation. Um, and then sometimes just postpartum, our sacrum and our low back or um, lumbar area will change. And sometimes it doesn't get better on its own. So you might need to strengthen the entire core. That certainly makes sense. Thank you. Um, so that's all we have for today. I do want to let everybody know that if you registered for this webinar, you'll be receiving a follow-up email that has um, access to the recorded version. It'll also have Dr. Katie's contact information. So if you do think of a question later and you want to reach out to her, that will be available to you. So 
thank you all for joining us and thank you dr katie for sharing all your knowledge with us you're welcome thank you mm -hmm.